Okay, people of the internet, and welcome to your fifth tutorial in programming games in C++. So in this tutorial, we're going to be covering how we can load a texture from a PNG image. I'm in my work with other compressions. I I generally use PNG because it's a nice, small yet high quality compressed image format. And we're going to learn how to uh, basically load them in instead of having to use colors. So we're going to just begin this by uh, enabling something in OpenGL. I'm going to just put it below my geo blend because I like to keep all my uh, enable GL enables together. So we're going to enable GL underscore texture 2D. So this is going to allow us to use textures. We're then going to need to include something for our load texture function. We're going to need to include the string library, which I'm sure you've all used in a just normal C++ programming. So now we're going to create our load texture function. It's actually going to be an integer because an integer acts as like the index. So like in one of my programs I know that the texture for wood is 11 because it it just uses that as a reference so it says oh look for a texture with the identity of 11. So it's just going to return an integer. You don't really need to understand how that works. Um, so we can just leave that. Hang on. So we're just gonna it's gonna take a string, uh, obviously for the file name that we want to load, and now we get into the actual programming of this. So we're gonna want to start off by declaring an SDL surface, and it's gonna be a pointer. We're gonna call it image. You can call it whatever you like, and it's going to load in an image, and we're gonna say file name, and for this you'll need to put dot CSTR. Now this basically means that we're loading it in as a as a C style function instead of a C style string instead of a a um, C plus plus style string because they're different. Apparently, <laughs> STR doesn't like us using that. Uh, we're then going to have to use a special bit of code that you wouldn't not you don't have to have this, but I'd recommend you put this in. Uh, STR display format alpha image what this is going to do is it's going to pick up any alpha channels transparency uh, from our image that we've declared which is really really helpful because you don't want to have to be like removing colors and stuff all the time from I'm getting a <laughs> getting steam and Skype messages here um, let me just quit Skype sorry about this um, there goes the Skype sound um, so yeah so it's gonna basically going to tell us SDL to use transparency on the image. So now we're going to create an unsigned object. This is basically a type of variable we're just going to uh, load our image into. Then we put GeoGen textures. We're just going to put a one in because we are, we're only rendering one texture, and we're going to create a wraparound to the object that we just created. Right, so now we have to put in a ton of OpenGL commands to tell Open. No, we don't. <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> missed a bit. Um, we're gonna have to create a GeoBind texture before we do this, so that um, so that we are uh, we're using these parameters on the correct thing. So we haven't yet actually added a texture to object, but we're gonna tell OpenGL how to process it first. So we're going to need to put four text texture parameters in. So you just put text parameter f like so, and we're just going to copy that out four times. So in the first one, there's quite a lot of writing to be done here. We're going to put gl un underscore texture 2d. Tell it we're using a there uh, 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 2d texture. And um, so we're going to now put something in called the min filter, and the minimum filter is pretty much what it what it sounds like. It's the minimum of its kind of filtering ability. And we're going to this is the important bit here. We're going to set this to GL nearest. Now what this is going to do is if it has pixels overlapping where other pixels should be, it's going to if you did a uh, you can do this, you can put GL linear, and that's going to make your texture a lot smoother. But if you're going for a pixely look to your game, which I'm going to be doing in the tutorials, then you're going to want to put a nearest filter on it. 
We're then going to copy that again, except, except change that to mag, not min. And then we need to add two things. Now, the, again, these you don't need in. These are only here to process the alpha channel. And why am I adding these manually? I've already copied them out four times. Oh well. Uh, so we're going to put geotextured underscore 2D again. GL underscore texture underscore wrap underscore S. GL underscore clamp underscore. It, it has a lot of kind of underscores that you just have to do in this. Right, so there you go. And we're just going to copy that again, except we are going to take out the S, replace it with a T. Simple as. Uh, now we get into the very main important part of this. You'll need to have this. Uh, this is going to convert our um, SDL surface we declared into a 2D texture that OpenGL can process. So we're going to put GL underscore texture underscore 2D. Oh, I thought I'd done it perfectly there. <laughs> I uh, spelled it wrong. I was going to be like a ninja, do it really quick. I'm going to put zero. I don't know what that parameter is. Don't ask me. Uh, RGBA because we want it to uh, process red, green, blue, and alpha. We're then going to want to uh, give it a. Yep. We're then going to want to give it a couple of things to tell it how to process the texture. So we're going to give it the width of the image. We. C we're going to give it the the width of the image. The uh, image image that so, um, we created, we're going to give it the height of the image we're calling it an image from now on, ok guys, that's how it works uh, we then put another zero and then put gl underscore rgba again don't ask me why perhaps the first one is telling you how to process the whole image and the next one is telling you the image that you're sending to it maybe, I don't know we're then going to call an unsigned byte because we declare the object up there as unsigned and then the important part, we're going to give it all the pixels there you go, we're going to go here, there you go, we have GL have, have a ton of pixels, do stuff with this and then just to prevent memory leaking we're going to put SDL free surface image and then we last bit, we need to return not the p, not the p object we're going to return the object. So now we've got a fully, what should be a fully functioning uh, load texture function. Except there's one, I can't I forget to do this. There's one very, very important thing that you're going to need to do here. So you're going to need to, uh, as I said, I'm not doing any tutorials on how to set these things up. Uh, I've got, if you go to the first tutorial, there's links to sites that tell you how to do that. I'm going to include the SDL image header file. I think that's what it's called, isn't it? I've got my reference open here. <laughs> yep, the SDL image file. That's all cool. We're going to we're going to be using that. So now we need to. I'm just going to do this quickly. Don't want to waste too much time. So in our initialize function, we're going to load a texture. We don't need to do that. Let's. let's call a variable up here called int text. That's an important thing to note, all your textures will need to be integer variables, you can't just play around with them making doubles and floats like you normally would. Um, so here we're going to put text equals load texture, this is the function we just made and we're going to say, I don't know, I haven't actually got an image loaded ready, I will do that in a second. Um, I've got plenty of images I could just shove in there if I needed to. Not rude ones, I assure you. No, because I don't have rude images on my computer. No. Uh, so we're going to load that one in, and then we're going to bind it to this triangle. Actually, we should probably make it a square because I don't have many triangle images on my computer. So every time you want to bind a texture to something, I'm going to call GeoBind Texture 2D, uh, and then we're going to tell it the texture we want. So we'll pass it text because that's the name of the texture. So as I said, we're going to make this a quad. Let's just fiddle about with this to make it work. 
should work. I think, yeah. Then we're going to need to put one last thing in. GL text code to f. This is basically going to tell OpenGL the text, the coordinates to the texture. It's pretty simple. It only works in from 0 to 1. So we're just going to do this very simply. So that's 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Very simply. Um, yeah. So the only thing remaining now is to actually get an image onto this area. I'll drag this over so you can see what's going on. Um, let's just choose any and as you go, a lovely picture of a bottle of beer. Ooh, a lovely bottle of beer. Ooh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna re. I'll drag this back in. <coughs> Sorry about that. We're gonna rename this to. Oh, it's a JPEG. We're not gonna be able to use that. Okay. We find a PNG. I'll find one. It's a lovely Minecraft logo there, but that's a GIF. There you go. Let's get a lovely creeper. Ooh, a creeper. Coming to kill you. Yes, I play Minecraft. Who cares? <laughs> Delete that. Giving up on beer. I'm going to call it test.png because that's what we called. And I'm probably going to get about 10 hours, but it's fine because I'll fix them and I'll get back to you on them. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 stop, stop. Phew, I almost, uh, I almost, I almost ran my mystery surprise then. I don't want you to see my mystery surprise. GL text image 2D was not declared in this scope. Okay, right. Uh, a couple of people have been having this issue, um, and I am, it would seem. Uh, I'm going to put this in the, well, it will be in the source code, as in every tutorial, the source code is, there's a link to the paste bin in the description. You can just copy this off the source code, it basically uh, manually defines those things, instead of, because uh, you see we got an error there. Um, Geotech Studio is not declared in this scope. Oh, this is bad. Oh, it's because we need capital D there. That's why. Yeah, there you go. Let's pick it up. Um, line 49. Oh, yeah, we've missed out a bracket. Okay, right. We should be good now. Actually, we didn't get as many errors as uh, I thought we would. No more errors. It's just linking compiling. Ah. And that's also a very important thing. You're going to need to include all the necessary DLL files. I'm just going to copy them over from my from my own thing. Just going to copy. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to need the uh, libpng. I might need the zlib as well. I'm not. I'm not sure. You guys can play about. See which ones you actually need. I'm just going to copy over pretty much all of them. So. Uh, so that I know that they're actually working. Build and run, target is up to date. Process return 3. So if your process returns 3, uh, it means that it, it failed to find the file you were talking about. So you're going to need to go back and you're going to need to uh, find what was the issue with it. And in this one, the issue was um <laughs> yeah I, I know what the issue is um the, oh god um oh ugh. why would you just not work like this I mean seriously like can you not just work for once is that too much to ask okay I'm gonna stop the recording and come back when it's uh, decided to work it's not being an idiot Okay guys, I'm back. It was literally five seconds that it took me to fix that. The issue was with the formatting on it. Um if you if you guys have this issue and your it's not formatting right, I'll do a tutorial, a short tutorial showing you the actual uh rendering techniques you're gonna need to uh, to make this work. But um for now I'm just gonna hope you guys don't have this issue. If you do, tell me and I'll make a tutorial on the on all the special options you'll need tick and stuff to make your PNGs
So there you go, we've got a nice picture of a nice man in a very purple hat. It's a very lovely purple hat, I have to say. And uh, as you can see, if we actually go into the image file, let's open that up. It's a little bit small. You can see that it's not just a black back. Oh, my, my mouse is so spazzy, I need a new one. It's not actually like a black background we've applied to it. With its transparency, and that's trans gone transparent with the background, which is fantabby dozy, fantabby dizzy. So uh, yeah, this has been a relatively long one, but I hope you've you've found a uh, good knowledge from it. Good knowledge, that's not even the right way of putting it. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, of course you haven't enjoyed it. It's learning. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, apologies that there wasn't a tutorial yesterday. I have set myself a pretty high goal uploading two a day. There probably won't be two today, because this was quite a long one. Uh, but yeah, I shall see you guys next time, and get into programming some more games.